Hello. Welcome to Lower Mass's Lair. Or should I say, Lower Mass's Library. The mini series where we completely focus on the real world to see where your favorite TTRPG topics originated from. This time, in celebration of the Dark Archive, I'll be looking at the real world context of one of the upcoming chapters. This is the best way I found to talk about cryptids. So let's look at the trove of information we have on these beasts of the unknown, and potentially inspire a monster at your table. Warning beforehand, this is probably going to end up as more of a list than a forensic dissection of the topic, but uh, then I need to go through a 101 of the topic somehow, so what can you do? First, let's set a baseline of what cryptids are. Cryptids are creatures cryptozoologists think might exist somewhere in the wild. What separates cryptids from animals is lack of actual scientific proof they exist. While biologists actually study the animals, use the scientific method to discover if they are a new species or not, etc., cryptozoologists rely primarily on stories and folklore to establish that their charge exists, which Truth is stranger than fiction, sure, but so maybe some of these exist somewhere. But many have an equal chance of existing as dragons or vampires. A.K. If they did exist and people have actually seen them, then we would actually have more evidence to prove so. However, do you know where dragons and vampires do exist? Which is why these creatures fit well in fiction. Going through, let us divide these by groups. Starting with everyone's favorite, the lake monsters. We all know of the Loch Ness Monster. First sighting we have K comes from the 1830s, but there are claims of, that the stories of a creature in that lake being warded off with a prayer in the 7th century is actually a tale of Nessie. These creatures appear across the world, with Canada having Ogopogo, Igopogo, Maripogo, etc. America having Champ, the Bear Lake Monster, the Ilamna Lake Monster, Sweden having the Storstjo Monster, Australia has the Mululanda Monster, Japan has Issy and Kusi, the list goes on. This group also overlaps with living dinosaurs, with one of the leading theories of all the above is that the ancient Peleosaurs somehow survived to the modern day, and are only being sighted now. So Central Africa's Molele Mbembe is a close cousin, despite being a sawpod. Now that we have one of the big ones out of the way, let's go with the other, ape men. There have been legends of ape men across the world including predominantly in Indian mythology. One of the reasons people try to say these creatures are real is the diverse amount of stories of ape-like men in mythology. But the closest evidence to proof of one of these kinds of creatures existing is of course the famed Bigfoot photo, which by the way has neither been proven nor disproven, so take that as you will. Outside of Sasquatch and Yeti, Lesser known ape men of cryptozoology include the European Rudwos, the Russian and Mongolian Almas, the Japanese Hibigon, the Chinese Yaren, the African Kukundak, the Southeast Asian Nagori Rung, or however it is in Taiwan, right? <laughs> the Australian Yahweh. And the skunk ape, which the, is the southeast to Bigfoot's northwest. By the way, I said Taiwan instead of Thailand. Anyway, <laughs> it should also be noted, while I am just going with real world today, Pathfinder 1E does have a playable Sasquatch named Orang Pendok after a uh, Indonesian ape man. So these definitely are an option at play. Now let's get more specific. While many legends of the old world have faded into myth, 
exploration of the new frontier of America has brought new legends known as fearsome critters. Many of them still considered as, well, not cryptids. Faith in these creatures was never widespread, and most know their stories. But these stand as close cousins, and considering the purpose of the series is to give real world information to understand it on tabletop, or give one an idea to bring to tabletop, I'm bringing them in as an honorable mention. In your game, they could just be as real as Bigfoot, so go wild. <laughs> the creatures are slash were said to live around uh, New England or Midwest areas of the United States. The four most famous ones to for my research are the one with a thousand different names, but the one I'm going to try to pronounce today is Gaius Curtis, which is a creature that the only consistent information on is is that it has legs on one side of the bo its body shorter than the other, which helps you in climbing steep cliffs. The squonk, a creature covered in warts and boils, who hides because it knows it is the ugliest thing alive. Ah, the famed jackalope, a, a carnivorous nightly singer, bunny with antlers. And of course, the vicious hodag, a creature with many descriptions, with the only thing that each description has in common is that it's vicious. But seriously, there are thousands of these weird things, and you never know what might inspire you reading down the list. Throughout the uh, human sponsors of America's do not count, those of the other colonial nation of Australia do. Partially because they double down on the everything is de deadly in Australia meme. Two of the big ones, Yowies and Bunyips, come originally from local folklore. But because this became the stuff of cryptids when colonial, eh, colonists connected them to the Sasquatch and lake creatures specifically. Then we have drop bears, cousins of koalas, which eat people. The hunting method being dropping on people from above. Its origins are actually just stories to scare tourists, but despite that, they're just as strong a part of this list as any other. Also originally for tourists, the hoop snakes and stick snakes. Extremely venomous snakes good at mobility and stealth respectively. Then there is the boaner. A local lizard monster which colonists have slowly had it grow in size over the years to now it's the size of a T-Rex. Finally, the legendary Kango Walla Fox. A mix between kangaroo, wallabies, and foxes. All which do not threaten humans. But is that not a mysterious creature? For the next system, while I try to make the library's system neutral, I have a short list of monsters which have appeared in Pathfinder, some as recently as Monsters of Myth. So let's do a lightning round uh, of advertising one system and potentially inspiring for the other. First, the Jersey Devil was first sighted in the 1700s around South New Jersey. Said to be born of a witch, this chimera creature is the closest thing New England has to Bigfoot. Well, tourist trap wise. They look pretty different. Across the pond, from the 1830s to the 1900s, a mysterious fire breathing, high jumping creature had worked hard to scare people to death. Dub Spring Heel Jack, many questions arise on just what this humanoid was. Time skip to the 1952. We have seven people in West Virginia encounter a ten foot tall monster, the Flatwood Monster. It brought with it illness and strange lights. Not far away in the 60s, there were various sightings of an insectoid humanoid, later dubbed the Mothman. People associate the appearance with a later extremely deadly bridge collapse, leading to claims that it had the power to see the future. Finally, we have the Chupacabras, 
Creatures which drain blood of cattle. A legend that started in Puerto Rico in the 70s before moving to Mexico. There was a wave in ca of cattle deaths in the 90s, which originally had the creature named. Now coming to the end, we have covered briefly several of the most popular cryptids. But there is one more I personally want to cover. From Japan, we have the legendary Suchi Noko. This is a viper with a strange fat body, a skinny tail tip, and which chirps and squeaks instead of hisses. It actually shares characteristics with Australian's briefly mentioned hoop snake, and the similarly mentioned fearsome critter in American legend, able to form itself in a wheel to move. Though this one is the OG, settings of it dating back to the 8th century. And stories also claim it can wind up its body like a spring, allowing it to do what can only be described as a double jump. How is that not what every DM wants at our table? Or at least as a pet. <laughs> These things are so cute. But anyway, that's going to be today's video. Maybe if the future demands it, I could look deeper into these creatures, but for now this is a nice prepper which might give inspirations to any of you for things to have at your table. Though again, Pathfinder already has half of these things, so. <laughs> also, I should note, some of these creatures also stand on the thin line with aliens. They usually are overall a different category, but I am still planning on talking of aliens next month. Partially because I love the unseen, partially because I could not think of a good video idea which involved some of the actual topics in the Dark Archives. But speaking of the checklist, let us say we talk about cultists next week. And how about a whole planet of them? See you then.